God is good. And all the time. So before I delve into the scripture of today, that is my homily, I want you to know that our mass, because of the scrutiny, uh, it may go beyond the hour, at least two hours. <laughs> I am not taking my breakfast, but I will try to survive at least one and a half hour. Can you? Can you? Okay, thank you very much. And also, for you to know that throughout the Diocese of Des Moines, we are launching our annual Diocesan Appeal, and I want to thank you very much for your contribution. And your contribution goes a long way to support the Diocese in terms of its pastoral initiative and mission. Had it not been your contribution, we the international priests, if I say the international priests, those of us who have not been incarnated or belong to the diocese, our immigration documents and other expenses that the diocese make will not survive. So your contribution helps to bring in priests here. And if you cast your eyes around, we have a lot of priests who are from other countries working here. The diocese says we don't want to close churches if we can afford to get priests from outside, we will keep the churches open. So thank you very much for supporting the diocese and by extension, our parish goal. Last year, we had about 143,000 and we are a little short of that amount. We have a little over 1,000 to redeem last year pledge. In as much as we have not redeemed that, I am still confident that we can redeem that pledge and then also start contributing to the new one. If we look at our parish register, we have a little over 900 or close to 1,000. Yes, the number of us who contribute is very sad. We have less than 300 people contributing to the annual diocesan appeal. I am not indispensable. International priests are not indispensable. Yet we need to support and make sure that we keep our parishes open. In the same way also your contribution supports priests, uh, insurance and also retirement for our priests. You know very well that in a corporate world, if you have a degree, master's or doctorate, your pays go very high but it is not like that in the Catholic Church. Whether you have a doctorate or you have a diploma or whatever, it is standard. Are you aware? Yes, because you support us, and the diocese also support us because of your contribution. So I want to appeal to you, if you have not given before, let's prayerfully consider supporting our annual diocesan appeal. And also, in order to make announcement more frequent and more impactful, we also need somebody who will be there, like to be a chair for one year. Your duty is just to announce and tell us where we are with our goal and encourage others to join. So if you are interested to help just for one year, one year contract, okay, just for one year, yours is to come and announce and tell us where we are so that we are informed about our goal and then also encourage others to join. So thank you very much for your attention. Can I begin my homily now? Okay, thank you very much. And are you ready to support the annual diocesan appeal? Thank you very much. Okay, so today the third Sunday of Lent the church put before us the image of thirst, image of water, which we can see in the first reading and the responsorial psalm, as well as in the gospel reading. If you read the American psychologist motivational hierarchy, Abraham Maxlaw hierarchy of needs, Abraham Maxlaw hierarchy of needs, who is a psychologist, he put it this way that there are basic things we need in life as a human being. One is food, 
clothing, water, shelter, safety, or security. These are the physiological needs, the basic needs that we as a human being, we need to survive. So water, for instance, and food, they serve as a springboard for human survival. So the cross of the matter for us today is, are you thirsty for something? And what is it that you are thirsty for? It's not just about water on the physical level, but it goes beyond that. Beyond the physical needs, we also have a spiritual craving, something that is void within us that we want God to fill for us. So I ask the question, is there anyone here who has never complained before? I'm not asking you to raise your hand. Is there anyone here who has never complained or grumbled before? Okay, so it means that all of us here, in one way or the other, has ever complained or grumbled before. True or false? For instance, when we're not having snow, I complain that, God, we need snow. Then when we had the snow, I said, God, this is too much. <laughs> you see, when the weather is nice, we say, oh, today the weather is nice, but it's a little bit chilly. So we always have something to say in one way or the other. Or even in the church, oh, it is too warm over here. Somebody will say it is too cold. You see? So as a human being, we also complain. It is the crave for physical needs that leads to a faith crisis. And that is what we need to watch. Because the reading, the first reading before us talks about the third complaining of the people of Israel. The third time they grumble and complain against God and against Moses. Let's look at it. Complaint number one. When the Lord led them out of Egypt, they go to the Red Sea. They complain that God has brought them there so that their enemies will kill them. Then go through Moses led them through the pillar of fire by night and cloud by day. Then when they got to the desert, they complained. They even said, we were happier off in Egypt when we sat around the port of flesh. And now you have brought us here into the desert to die of hunger. And what happened? God gave them manna from heaven. And then the third complaint is that, oh God, we are tired of eating all this food, the same food all the time, and we are even thirsty. So you have brought us here so that we can die of thirst. And now, in the reading for us, God gave them water to quench their thirst. My dear friends, it is not just a human attitude to complain, but if we make that becomes a habit to the extent that we lose faith and hope in God, that the second reading reminds us that to keep faith and hope high, that even when we were nothing, we were hopeless, we were helpless, God sent his son to die for us as sinners. Why can't we trust God to carry us through in a moment of craving, in a moment of thirst. That is why the gospel reading tells us the source of all water that can quench our thirst. That is Jesus Christ himself. My dear friends, where in your life are you testing for something? We are all testing, maybe for relationship, maybe for love, for your children, grandchildren, for your husband and wife. Maybe you are testing for help. There's something within you that does not make you look good from inside. Deep within every human being, we have that craving. Either we plunge ourselves into sin in substitute for that which is lacking, or we are able to let go of those vices and habits and clench on to Christ. What is it in your life that makes you void Maybe the loss of a dear one, 
and we're still mourning and grieving for such a loved one, a dear one. All these things are elements that shows that we are thirsty for something. Those physical void can never be filled by any human being. There's no human being that can fill that quench, that thirst for you. It is only God. That is why the woman, out of her own thirst, went to fetch water at the wrong time. She went at noon. And women at that time were not supposed to go and fetch water at noon. But because of her own problems, because of her own issues. And again, when she went, it was divine providence that she met Jesus Christ. Now she met Jesus Christ within uh, the, the element of tension. Because as you know, Samaritans and Jews, as she herself said in the reading, they have nothing in common. God is good. And all the time, I just want to be sure you are paying attention. I'm giving you the narrative for you to understand and also tease out the most important aspect to apply to our life. So the first thing is that the woman met Jesus under sociocultural issue. The fathers, they have nothing in common, religious issues. They don't have the same God, the same faith they profess. Yet Jesus was able to disarm this woman by striking a conversation. Am I biased towards others? Am I judgmental? Do I place myself over and above others because I am the best and you are the less? Because I am favored and you are not favored or I am special more than you? Even when you have all the academic acumen or the intellect, do I look down on others who cannot be at my level? Jesus did not see himself over and above the woman but went to her level by striking that conversation. We also need to recognize the needs of others and even in their weakness, we are able to relate with them. So the quest for physical needs led her to leave everything behind to go and evangelize. The first woman to evangelize the gospel of John is this Samaritan woman. And to you, my dear catechumen and candidates, your mission after baptism is to go out to evangelize. You are also craving for something that nobody else can give you. The ordinary water of baptism goes beyond that. That is why at baptism, Jesus himself goes deep into the water with you because he is the spring of wealth that yields eternal life. Baptism washes away our sin and cleanses us once again as God's children. So as you prepare yourself to be baptized on Easter Vigil, you must know that there is something that nobody else can quench, and it is only Jesus Christ himself who said, I am the living water, and that living water is what we all crave for. God is good. So my dear friends, we also need to draw from that font of life in a moment of despair, in a moment where everything is dark around us, we also need to draw from that font. Of course, in Psalm 42 verse 1, it says, As the deer yearns for running stream, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. What are you testing for? What is it within you? That outwardly, you made the whole world to think you are okay, but deep within you, you are wounded. You need God to fill that void. Just as Jesus Christ filled the void for this woman, so the Lord is there to fill that void for you. Let us pray, my dear friends. Let us look deep into our hearts. As baptism makes us to become evangelizers, so the water of life that springs within us empower us also to take on the mantle of spreading the good news like this woman. Are you ready to go out? Am I ready to go out? Are you ready to allow God to quench your thirst? Are you ready to allow God 
to heal you of your brokenness that nobody else sees, your challenges nobody else sees. Are you ready to be receptive to open your heart to the Lord and say, here I am, Lord, fill me? Or you so harden your hearts that the people of Israel, when they, they fail to put their hope and trust in God, am I ready to let go of the things that appear to give me joy, yet I regret after those actions? Am I feeding on my vices? Or I'm growing in my virtue. What am I willing to let go of? Think about this. And allow the grace of God to shine through you. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. And then I hear my Savior speaking, draw from the well that's never shall run dry. Fill my cup, Lord, and lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me Please remain seated. You remain seated. I will humbly invite the elects and their sponsors to please come forward. Sponsors are behind their candidates. And could I ask 